Well, what's up guys? Coming at you from beautiful Lake Havasu, Arizona. And today we are talking about a knife that has a colossal size personality. I mean, this thing is so big. I handed it to some of my Stormtrooper buddies. They were just like, dude, we can take down an AT-AT -AT Walker with this thing. It's so impressive. So um, intimidating. This Buck Knives, I believe Budgie or Buggy Blade is what we're gonna be taking a look at here today. We have two versions I've been messing around with now for a while. And we're gonna look at this. It's got a colossal personality, that's for sure. And it's one of the smallest actual tools I've ever tested and reviewed here at the channel. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look today, break it down. I've been carrying a lot here around the RV. We're gonna talk about where it might make sense, running competitive options, talk about all that today with this little tool. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so so tiny, Small, probably the smallest knife we've, we've done here. But for some people, there may be some appeal. There may be some curb appeal here, some blade appeal, some edge appeal to some of us out there. So uh, we got two different versions I've had the pleasure to mess around with. Um, and I am gonna give one of these away over on Instagram. So if you follow us over on Instagram, go check it out. Um, we're gonna do like a flash giveaway uh, same day that this goes live. I will post something up and you know do like a one day uh, and we will be giving one of the two of these little guys away to some lucky winner just to have some fun with. So for sizing though, I'll, I'll move the Jade G10 version out of the way here for a minute. Here is the K-Bar Dozer. It's a pretty compact little blade, but you can see how much bigger Rat Model 2, the smaller one. These both have about 2.75 inch cutting edges um, for that. So just we're gonna run that out of the way there. And then um, here is a Swiss Army Victorinox Cadet in aloe, or al alloy, aloe, oh God, <laughs> that's hilarious, um, in alloy. Um, so actually probably pretty close um, in edge retention, or in uh, edge retention, man, I'm all over the place today. Um, little GT Junior Mark II is playing Legos behind me, so maybe that's a little part of distracting. But I want to show us here with the two inch blade, here is a Milwaukee Fastback. Um, and you can see that the edge, you're getting, you know, maybe three quarters to two thirds of an inch longer on this little buck than you would on um, a utility knife. So just keep that in consideration as a grain, with a grain of salt as we look at this monstrosity of a tiny blade. So um, we got two different kind of versions. Uh, this G10 that's in black, you're gonna get medium grit texturing on. And then uh, the jade is gonna be more of like, or natural, I call it jade. It's a natural, um, that's slick. So um, I'm gonna take care of GT Junior Mark II. What? We just find a robot head. Oh, you should totally put that on the guy. GT Junior Mark II found a little robot Cyclops head. That's what all the excitement's about. So um, with that, guys, uh, we got those two different types of traction, slick or um, medium on the G10. They're very exposed, kind of um, milled out frame lock. And that is on the other side there, we got that stainless steel frame lock on the other side there, good detent ball that will help with the detent. Now, this you cannot whip these open. I've messed with them a bunch. Um, the slit is very easy to engage. But I mean, it's a slow, you know, manual motion. You're not gonna be like, eh. I mean, I guess you can, but I mean, you really gotta, you really gotta give it some elbow grease. Ugh. And I just don't tend to do it that way. It's just easier. Just go and pop it open and start using the tool. And then it's how I tend to close it is I put some pressure on the blade, pushing this way. And then with my index finger, I pull away and disengage the frame lock like that. So you open that up like that. I mean, it hits about 60% of the blade because of how thin that blade is. Right there, you do have a little stop bar pin right there. So you just move that out of the way, boom, closes back up. Move that out of the way, closes back up, boom, and you open that guy like that. Now, um, on top of that, it's pretty good dimensions overall. And it's like three and a quarter inches. So it's definitely a three fingered blade. So I can get full grip on that. Your pinky isn't going to be touching it at all, but I can then grab it. it has a deep cut in right there. No jimping, but I'm fully in control. 
So I did find it fun to use. Now the two inch blade um, is not gonna give you a lot. You know what I mean? It's basically like a utility knife. Now utility knives can do a heck of a lot opening packaging, uh, slicing up some cardboard, going through some cordage, um, but that's about it. You know, you're not gonna be sitting there at two inches, you're just not gonna really span a whole bunch past that. And you do have a little, I mean, you got leverage, I guess. And I never felt like I didn't have leverage, but it's just, you know, I mean, it's a tiny little knife. So, I mean, it's for the little fine, you know, manipulation type of work. Now we have a nice hollow grind. I mean, this thing is stupid sharp. Uh, it has a 0 0.09, so less than an eighth of an inch thick thickness on the blade. Good sweep, good piercing point. I was able to penetrate packaging and, you know, do that type of stuff. So for your basic, you know, everyday tasks, you can, you can do, I would say 75% of what you're going to come up against, um, in, in your daily living. Uh, and really food prep is where there will be limitation just cause it can't span. And then just the bigger, heavier tasks that you may just want more leverage on the handle, more blade length to actually catch the material and cut what needs to be cut. Right. But I mean, you pinch it, you do a little fine, you know, slice like that, open your kids, you know, packaging for their favorite toy that just arrived or whatever. Um, sure. It, it can absolutely do that type of stuff. I could get some, uh, carving done. It was so, um, aggressive on the hollow grind. You really had to actually kind of relearn the hollow grind was so aggressive that for, you know, like whittling, you could do that, like making a spear will just remove wood. But for actual fine shaving, I was kind of having difficulty. I think it was a mixture, again, of the leverage in combination with just how thin and how aggressive that hollow grind is. It, you kind of have to hold it a certain way. Otherwise, it just takes too much and you can't even really make a feather stick um, is what I found with it. So I would say 50-50 on the outdoor task, depending on what you expect a, a knife of this size to do for you. Um, and then the really cool aspect, again, is that S35 VN steel that they put on this tool. You know, a lot of times companies, they're gonna go like with a tool of this size, they're just gonna slap some budget steel on there. Like, yeah, whatever. Like, yeah, I don't know who's gonna use this, but here you go. So, but the fact that they, one, keep it here, made in America, awesome. And then S35EN, I mean, you're getting premium steel that's gonna hold steady for quite a while before you have to tune it up. And I've always loved S35VN steel. Um, it's a great steel to work with, great steel to use, good edge retention, rather rust resistant. I mean, it, it's impressive. And the fact that they put it on this little guy is just really cool. Um, now that pocket clip, as you can see there, very strong tension, which is nice. So you, you're not gonna be afraid of losing it. It almost pulls your pocket if you're wearing like shorts, which this would be a good like, basketball short, you know, lightweight, you know, maybe, um, uh, you know, we're at Lake Havasu when I'm filming this, this is some of that background noises that you might be hearing. Um, so, you know, maybe on a boat, you know, something like that with your swim trunks, you know, cause it's so small, you're not going to feel it. Uh, and this does have that big lanyard that you could lash a secondary little shock cord lanyard and wrap it around something or through something, you know? Um, so in that regard, but it's so strong that, uh, you will kind of feel it tugging at your pants when you're trying to get it out of your pocket. So that is something to kind of be aware of, but you're not going to lose it. So that's a benefit, um, you know, and how small it is. That's something you would want to consider and the price point, which is $80. <laughs> That's a lot of money for such a little knife. Uh, I mean, the material is all there. And if it was normal size, like the size of the wrap model two, or, you know, the, um, dozer, then I would be like, yeah, totally like great price point and buy it. I think it would be awesome. I would love to see like the extra large version of this coming in at like exactly this sizing. I think that if it was 80, if it stayed at about 80 bucks and it was these sizes, oh man, that would be a sick, sick pocket knife. They literally kept everything exactly the same and just enlarged it. That would be a tool I would be pumped to carry. Um, as it stands right now, you know, I mean, you're getting you're not going to get S35VN steel on these guys, obviously, but there's a lot out there at 80 bucks that you can get your hands on. That's going to be an actual like full size tool. So yeah, let's see an extra large version. I think I would be way more pumped with an extra large version. Um, I do appreciate that Buck sent this over to me so I could show you guys what it can do, what it can't do. Uh, I think it would be maybe a great option for um, a kid, particularly I'm thinking for my son, I'm definitely gonna hold on to one for GT Junior as he's starting to get to that age where you can start to carry pocket knives. It'd be a great tool for him, or you just need a really small compact pocket knife for certain types of tasks and the, you know, just normal box cutter just isn't quite 
what you're looking for. Well, this is going to give you insane everything I can see, not only quality, but also, you know, um, capability in such a very tiny package. But it's like the cutest, funnest, most colossally person personality -ic. has a big personality. That's what I'm trying to say. Pocket knife. Would I personally go out and drop $80 on the tool? P probably not. Not unless I was gifting it to, again, like my son. That's where I could maybe see it being like, yeah, this is a first knife. Um, I could see that. But for some of you, you know, you might fall in love with it or it might be a great, like, knife, you know, to carry as a backup or give to the wife or girlfriend. But I want to hear from you guys. What do you guys think about this budgy, buggy buck knife? Uh, would you like to see an extra large version? I know Buck watches these videos, sees the comments. So let's leave some comments below. I want an extra large version right there at about uh, 2.75 inch cutting edge would be amazing. But I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys what your thoughts are. Uh, leave a comment below. Subscribe if you're not yet a subscriber. Uh, check out the other video popping up. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.